Hey guys, I'm getting out for a late afternoon spearfishing adventure today. It's already like four o'clock in the afternoon. Only two or three hours of sunlight left. So uh, there's some wind, there's definitely some waves out here, but uh, I'm excited to jump in. My friend uh, reported that he saw some ava, which are the Hawaii milkfish out here a couple days ago. And they can be huge, like three, four, five, six feet big. So if they're still hanging around, that'd be a great fish to catch. And uh, I could do a catch and cook at the end of this video. Um, also want to say thanks to everyone who's been subscribing lately. Man, I've had so many new subscribers, guys. It's been so awesome. Your likes, your comments are amazing. Thank you. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing it. I'm going to keep creating really cool content and take it to a whole nother level. So click on it. Alrighty, I'm going to gear up and get out there. Doesn't the water look so good today? When I jumped in, I noticed the near shore water was actually really warm and it is the summer right now. And by the end of the day, it's almost like a warm pool in the shallow parts. The underwater visibility wasn't the best. It was a bit cloudy. If you look into the distance towards this Eagle Ray, you can see that it was a little bit stirred up. What always motivates me to get out here is the fishing. But whether I catch something or not, spending time on the reef and soaking up every minute always feels like it's worthwhile to be out here. It was cool to find this little hermit crab and then this edible seaweed we call limu kohu is growing like crazy right now. I was testing out my GoPro with an underwater tripod here to see if I could get some cool close-up shots like this of the reef fish. As a bonus when I'm out diving, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, I usually fill up my pockets with free fishing lead that I can repurpose for later when I go shore fishing. So my plan today was to go hang out at the end of the reef where the reef meets the sand and to see if I could spot any of those cool milkfish that my friend had seen a few days earlier. I was testing out this cool throw flasher. It's basically two big fishing flashers tied to a piece of rubber so that it sinks nice and slowly. And if I want to sink faster, I just cut off a bit more of the rubber. I'm hoping that while it's sinking, it might catch a sun ray or two and flash back and get the attention of a giant fish to bring him in for a close shot. I wanted to do a quick shout out to some of my awesome subscribers, William Christman, Connor Willoughby, Shalina, Robert, Adam, Happy Boy, Isaac Mozena, you guys rock. Right here, one solitary milkfish swims out of nowhere directly in front of me. I was already planning on how I was gonna cook it up. I lined up the nearly point blank shot and I missed. I can't believe I missed guys. The sun was already getting low. I thought my chance at a big fish was over for the day. And then this happened. Fish on, nailed it. I can feel the shaft is really firmly placed into the fish. So I grabbed the mono line. This fish is headed right back towards the reef in a big circle. And what I was really worried about off the bat was that my mono line that I'm holding on to right here between me and the fish was gonna get cut on the razor sharp lava rocks. So I'm like rope climbing my way to the actual fish being drugged through the water. And all I'm thinking about right now is keeping this line from getting clipped by one of the sharp pieces of lava rock or coral. This right here was a close call. The fish almost clipped the mono line right here on a rock and just in time, I lifted it up like two or three inches and you can see it just cleared the rock. As soon as I got hold of the fish's collar, I grabbed my knife and I brained it. And right away, I cut the gills so that I'd get the best tasting fillets.
up until this point, it all happened so fast. Like everything was a blur and right about here, I'm thinking to myself, this fish is really heavy and might be bigger than I thought it was when I first initially pulled the trigger. Hey guys, this is a giant Trevally. guys had to use this cart here to get them back up to the vehicle so big man I can't wait to do a catch and cook with this one it's gonna be so awesome Here's how the fish actually breathes, guys. Water passes through the gills, and this is how all fish breathe. The gills on this are huge, so they demonstrate it really well. But because the gills are an organ, and I'm probably gonna eat this fish in one or two days, organs start to deteriorate really quickly. So I'll remove the gills as well as the guts. So there's one more thing I wanted to show you. I removed this. This is actually from the throat, believe it or not. So not where his teeth are up here, but right back here in the actual throat, he's got additional teeth. And they use these to crush stuff up once they've actually put it in their mouth. Because once they put it in their mouth, it's almost like they've trapped it. And then they'll crush it. Like if they have uh, you know, an octopus in there or even a full-size crab, they'll just take this and it's literally additional teeth in their throat and crush it. It's just sort of neat. Not all fish obviously have additional sets of teeth in their throat. So I've cleaned out this fish really well. That's exactly what I wanted to do. There's no organs in there. There's no gills in there, which are also organs. So nothing's gonna rot very quickly right now. And I'm gonna put it on ice for the next one or two days until I eat it. I've always wanted to catch a fish that was awesome enough to have Brian at Maui Fish Printing make into a Japanese fish print. Fish printing, or giotaku, was invented in Japan back in the 1800s as a way for fishermen to actually record and remember their catches. And this is definitely a fish that I want to remember. So first thing in the morning, I took my giant trevally over to Brian at Maui Fish Printing for him to get started. I'm gonna do a fish print of this massive Lula right here. Congrats, Michael. What a good what a good thing to spearfish. I bet you that was a good fight. So any good fish printer will tell you, if you want to get a good fish print first, you gotta start off with the 80s music. <laughs> Brian is a veteran fish printer. He knows what he's doing. His artwork is amazing. He paints your fish with a non-toxic ink and then covers it with this super delicate rice paper. It has the coolest look in it. You can see all the fibers and everything. Once the print is complete, the fish can actually be washed and then you can eat it. I can't wait to see the final product. I'll make sure to post it here at the end of the episode. Daryl and I are gonna fillet this the best we know how. This is the biggest fish I've ever shot uh, and filleted, so uh, we're just gonna get started. Uh -huh. 
to get all the meat that's sort of in between these bones right here, I actually use like an ice cream scoop usually. I haven't had a fish this big before, but some of the other big fish I've had, it works out really well. So just get every last bit of meat, you just put it in there, scoop it, and it comes out super nice and easy. Also guys, what we'll do at the end here is we'll actually hacksaw off the tail. And it's sort of cool, like sometimes I like to keep the tails of my biggest fish and I'll just chuck them on like my roof to just dry out in the sun for like, you know, a month or two. And you end up with like basically a tail that lasts forever. It's just like keeps the, the shape and color and texture and everything. And this part right here that does have some meat in it just kind of shrivels up a little bit, but it's a cool way to sort of remember this fish. These four big loins, it's so cool. They're like literally a couple pounds each. And uh, so cool to have this much meat from a fish. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually cut these up in big chunks and make burgers out of them, we decided. And the cool thing with this meat is that it's so firm that we could actually leave the meat whole. Most fish meat you can't put on the grill. Uh, I know with you know amberjack, you actually can. Amberjack's got a nice firm meat. And same thing with these big ulua, man. We can just you know cut entire burgers out of these. So anyways, we're gonna get started and can't wait to make a burger. We're finished up these fillets. Half the neighborhood dogs like showed up here, not kidding. I've got a few extra pieces. I don't even know what to do with all these pieces. So we got some burgers, we got some sashimi meat here. Uh, we got some little ones we're gonna fry up like chicken McNuggets. And uh, so yeah, we got so much fish, it's awesome. All right, we got a little meat packaged up here. I've also got my sushi freezer. I've got a prime piece of sushi sashimi meat here. Uh, I use a sushi freezer for a couple of reasons. I'll put a link in the description below to my sushi episode. If you haven't seen it, go take a look right now. I've also got these really cool absorbent pads, the same ones you see at the grocery store when you buy meat. It just sucks up all the blood and juices from your meat. So I'm gonna put these inside the bags as well and get started on the burgers. These burgers look so, so good. They're like mouth-watering, juicy goodness. I just wanna say this Ace seasoning, Ace's first cast, if you're familiar with Ace videos, I'll put a link to his channel below. Ace's seasoning is so good because it has like all the seasoning I would normally use on my meats, especially my fish. It's got paprika, thyme, salt, pepper, sugar, all the good stuff in there and it literally makes your fish a whole nother level good. So this is unsolicited, non-sponsored. I really do recommend this seasoning. I'll put a link in my description below to go check out Ace's uh, channel, his site, his seasoning, everything. It's so, so good. All right, going in for the first bite. That's really good. It held together really good on the grill. I've had lots of other types of jacks before. Daryl and I usually get, you know, Omilu or um, other types of like the Bard's Papillo more out there spearfishing. And it has that same flavor. If you're familiar with jacks, it has a good flavor. Pompano, if you're in Florida. Um, so yeah, really good taste. All right, everyone, when we're finishing these burgers, I'm gonna play the footage of the reveal of that awesome Goyo Taku, that fish print of this awesome GT. Thank you everyone for watching. This was such an awesome episode. What an awesome fish, what a catch, what a cool fish print it turned out. Thank you so much, Brian. And thanks everyone who's watched today. Please hit the like, subscribe buttons if you wanna see more, and we'll see you on the next one. If you like watching awesome you, hit subscribe and thumbs up too. Exploring the ocean, swimming with sharks, shooting big
big fish, hit it right on the mark. Chill, chill with your friends, watch the video till the end. Our passion spending time, find a different way just to blow your mind. Are you ready? Let's go. Watch a video, let's play Chanel on the side.